I want to welcome all our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm James Pierre. Joining us now is Eric Yutzi from Local 10 News ABC affiliate in Miami. Thank you so much, Eric, for being here. James, I'm honored. I appreciate you having me. No, thank you. It's an honor uh, for us as well to have you here to talk about your story, to talk about um, also what you do uh, uh, behind TV, behind the, the, the camera. So I want to start by uh, first asking you of your childhood. You know, you're not from Miami, no. right? So you're from a snow area, I felt believe, right? I grew up in the Boston area, just outside of Boston. Uh, actually, it was adopted at just three days old. Uh, it's a great story. My parents, my adoptive parents, who are my parents, uh, they were used to work out in California. My mother was a physician out there. She moved to the East Coast in Boston uh -huh. to be with my father, who was a teacher. And uh, one of her old doctor friends called her and said, hey, we've got this 16-year-old girl who is scared but has a baby that she wants to find a good home for. And my mother said yes. And so they flew out, picked me up, and took me back to Boston. And so from the beginning, I've been embraced and been told the story and been shown love. And so that was really my childhood, is growing up in a, um, with a mother who's a physician, mm -hmm. a doctor who is a teacher, in physics and astronomy. Mm -hmm. And so it was all science. It was, it was education, it was push yourself, and it was surrounded by love. How was the relationship with uh, your biological mother and your adopted mother uh, during your, your childhood? My, there was really none except for the thanks for raising my son. I mean, wow. That really is the extent of that relationship. I've never met her. Now that I have children, it is something I do think about frequently, not just from a what's your medical history perspective, mm -hmm. but as I look at my children, I say, if I knew I had to give one of them up f to be in a better situation, I would wonder every single day what they were doing. Wow. And so, so those are some of the questions that I still have to answer and ones that I look forward to answering. Yeah. Still today you're asking yourself about you know, these uh, questions. Do you think that has an impact during your childhood by not having your biological mother with you, even though you had that, sure. uh, you know, that love, uh, affection from your uh, adopted parents? I think it did to a degree, because there's a lot of times where you wonder, who am I? Yeah, I? My tendencies are different at times than my parents' tendencies. And is this something that was passed on genetically that's sometimes yeah. out of my control? But in the same regard, it was a story that I knew from the beginning. And it was a story that was embraced and, and shared widely. And so that certainly gave me the confidence to know that I was wanted, right? Mm. These people, my mother and father who raised me, wanted me from the very beginning, said yes right away. and so. In those times, you start to wonder. You're also uh, reminded how much you are really loved. Yeah. Tell me about your father. He's a physics professor, teacher, a physics teacher. He is an astronomy teacher. Just retired after teaching for almost 40 years at a prep school in Boston. Yeah. Uh, compassionate, incredibly intelligent. He walks outside on a dark, starry night and knows every constellation, knows every star, and can map the sky just from yeah. the back of his mind. And so being raised with that science background and that love for the outdoors is something yeah. I really got from him. A true mother of yours, I would say. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, he's, he's a wonderful role model for how to be a, a great father. I have four children. I've learned most of what my fathering techniques from him. Yeah. Um, in the same way sometimes where you say to your kids, and I know mm -hmm. you have a youngster yeah. as well, you say, oh, my gosh, I just said what my father used to yeah. say. Yeah. You know those moments. Yeah. And so yeah. he's a fantastic role model for me. And, uh, and I'm blessed to have had him. Good, good for you. I'll go a bit deeper. Now sure. let's talk a bit about your biological father. Anything that you know of him, any relationship? I know nothing. I truly know nothing about who my biological father was. The only thing I know about my biological mother is her name and mm. that she was Mexican. And so that's really the only blueprint I have of my biological family. And so those are questions that I think you want to answer someday. Yeah. And those are questions I'm interested in answering more so now than when I was younger, but those aren't questions that linger from a incompleteness perspective. Yeah. And yeah. I think that has to do with the testament to the adoptive family who, who made me their own. Yeah. And that makes you a, a stronger person sure. now, since you, you, know, you have kids as well, you have family, so to pass that on, to have more time with your kids. You have beautiful pictures of Thank your you. kids that you're spending you know, on social media yes. as well. So tell me more now about your family. Uh, now living with you in South Florida. Yes, so I have a fantastic, beautiful, incredible wife. We've been married for, it'll be 11 years this summer. Uh -huh. And I have four children, um, wow. nine, seven, 
four, and two. Wow. And so our house is loud. <laughs> it's rambunctious. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But every single day you sit back and you say, wow, what a blessing. You know, have this kind of energy in the house, to have this kind of love yeah. in the house. So we have a good time. Uh, sometimes we're screaming at each other, you know, at dinner time, <laughs> things get a little hectic like yeah. any family. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah. they're great kids. Yeah. They're great That's kids. the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it, uh, being a, a good father and also have a uh, family. Uh, moving in South Florida, yes. tell me about your first days now. You know, you say, you know what, forget about the snow. Now I'm it, in South Florida for the sun. I got to tell you, it is hard to make a decision sometimes that makes you look this smart. I was mm -hmm. living in Indianapolis. I was a sportscaster at the time. And Indy was going through a brutally cold winter. And so when I put my wife and four kids on an airplane to move down here with wind chill factor, yeah. negative 17 degrees. When they landed here, it was 75 degrees. And so my wife got off the plane. She shed the heavy jackets. The kids took off the hats. And it was just one of those moments where you say, Oh, yeah, this was a very, very good decision. Before we even started getting into yeah. the work that, that comes mm -hmm. to delivering news here in South Florida every mm -hmm. day, you knew this is a place yeah. that you could stay. She was just say like, welcome to paradise. Welcome right? to paradise. We're supposed to have a sign like that for you. Well, the <laughs> idea that you live where people spend years, sometimes thousands of dollars to visit, yeah. and you have an opportunity to really invest in that area and be immersed in it all the time, it's a very good thing. The community of South Florida really loves you. I want to know why. So, but we have to take a commercial break. Okay. So after the commercial break, we'll talk more about that, right? You're watching the talk with James Pierre. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more.